Spangled Banner, performed by our senior chorale. said that they love you today. Know that I do and I always will. Congratulations to the candidates for graduation. Class of 2017 at the National School of Arts. This is the first crop that I actually planted at the National School of the Arts. And now it's time to reap that incredible crop that they have grown to be and, and they are such an inspiration to me and certainly to anyone that they meet. My name is Dr. Gregory Stewart. I'm the Executive Principal of the National School of the Arts and I am humbled and honored to be a part of the festivities this evening. Thank you for being here. I'd like to introduce my guests. If I can have them come to the podium for just a second, I promise not to belabor this. We have a lot of great entertainment to come before we begin the commencement exercises. To my left, of course, is someone that I am lost without on a daily basis. My associate principal, Mrs. Randy Staggs, To her left, of course, the incredible Christian Bugs, a member of the Metropolitan National Public Schools School Board. The amazing Dr. Kathleen Dawson, the Executive Lead Principal for the National School of the Arts. And of course, everyone knows that I absolutely am completely lost without the Dean of NSA, Mr. Matthew Kilkenny. <laughs> it is a pleasure to have all of you here this evening, and certainly you're in for an incredible experience. If you've never attended a graduation ceremony of the National School of the Arts, sit back, relax. It's absolutely going to be astounding. That's how we do things at the National School of the Arts. All right, guys? Without further ado, you didn't come here to hear me. Let the festivities begin! And with that being said, our Master of Ceremonies this evening, Mr. Matthew Kilkenny.
It is most definitely an honor to be here. Um, had a chance to take a shot at this last year. Uh, I think I'm going to do a little bit better. I, I like the crop of students a little bit better, to be honest, than the one I did last year. Uh, one of my favorite things that I noticed last year about the NSA graduation at Opry is if you listen really closely, you can hear bridge math modules still being submitted as we speak. It was a shock last year when I was nominated to be the MC of this ceremony and still is. Uh, like I said, I am honored, but I do like to think of the scenario in which I was decided as the MC. I like to picture Dr. Stewart and Associate Principal Staggs sitting in a room laughing about how they're putting the person that was in charge of discipline all year long to be the MC of the graduation ceremony. I've got some uplifting story later on when Miss Kendall says we need to kill some time in between setups for performances, so we'll wait on that. What I do want to do before we get this thing started, there is such amazing performances ahead of us tonight, but I don't want to look past the amazing faculty that we have in the audience, the arts, the academics, and all the hard work that these teachers have put in for four years with these students. And a very special thank you to the counseling staff, as well as Miss Reba Love. <laughs> Without further ado, we have a piano for performance, Sonatina in C Major by Friedrich Kulau, performed by Nicholas Taylor. Ensemble Performance, Straight No Chaser by Thelonious Monk, performed by our Jazz Ensemble.
we have an extremely important graduate candidate to speak with you, our salutatorian, Miss Emma Nichol. Because I'm kind of nervous and there's a lot of people. Um, okay, so, Robert F. Kennedy once said, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. No one is a stranger to failure. We all know the feeling, whether it be from losing a competition, failing a test, or in my case, hitting a Porsche the day I got my license. <laughs> failure can be a strong incentive to work hard, but it can also be a barrier. For the longest time, I convinced myself that I would be happiest with safety and stability, that I could put aside my starving artist dreams to support something more hollow. I allowed failure to scare me into submission rather than use it to motivate me. But today I stand in front of you all to say, I would rather fail doing something I love than succeed in a life I would resent. I implore you all to fail greatly because your failure will build your character. Maybe you won't succeed in the end, and you're better believe that life will throw you a curveball, but you'll never wake up wondering what could have been. If you ever had any doubts about your ability to fulfill your dreams, I'm daring you to try. Do the thankless work so you can be the person others admire. Your confidence in failure will only make you more unstoppable. Very few people in this world feel they have the option to do what they love because they fear losing stability. I'm asking you to be the person that does not allow their fear to morph working ambition into a distant aspiration. Regret does not bode well with age. So go after your starving artist dreams, get rejected, try the impossible, and be scared. Just don't be afraid of making the mistakes that will make you great. Some of you might feel stuck right now and feel as though you cannot do what you truly love. But remember, the only constant in life is change. The earlier you learn this, the better. There will be difficult times ahead and situations you cannot predict but that is why I'm telling you to stand in front and push through. You make life happen for you. Don't wait for it to happen to you. Use fear as your guide and not your obstacle. To quote Charlie Day, you don't have to be fearless. Just don't let fear stop you. Allow yourself to remember the tough times and the mistakes because they will be just as big a part of you as the high times. No one interesting ever went through life with a perfect record. Own that. My hope for you today is that you see this graduation as a turning point in your life and an example of your capability. You are all remarkable people and you should be proud of where your resilience has brought you. This celebration should be a sign that your hard work has not gone unnoticed. And if you manage to listen to a word I just said, you already possess the great trait of patience. So go fail your best and live a life of mistakes. Thank you. Our next performance from the Piano Conservatory has me a little concerned because Ms. Gabriel was all over me about pronouncing this name properly all day long, so I'm going to give it a shot, Ms. Gabriel. Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy, Debussy, performed by Savannah Bennett.
Next we have our pop ensemble and swing band performing medley.
the turning point of folks Don't have to bother us to wait to go to Don't make a play, it's like this as well as don't know that's why It's not a question, but I'm listening to the time Something I'm gonna take the hope, in the end it's right
class of students this year, I see that in every single one of you. What you've had to go through to get to where you are tonight, you deserve every single second. We good, Ms. Kendall? All right. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell that story. And thank you to Trader Joe's for letting me stock shelves for that summer. Without further ado, we have our orchestra performance, Appalachia, by Mark Higginbotham. Thank you. 
last year as I have this year, the teamwork that goes into these performances, the little things, the little cues, the facial expressions to let people know, Grant plugging in Mark's piano as he frantically wondered why it wasn't working about 10 minutes ago. Those small things that go into these performances are extraordinary, and a lot of times I think we think of artists as individuals, but these students come together as a team beautifully when they're on this stage. And, you know, each and every time it just blows me away. Next we have the Piano and Senior Visual Art Show, For Good by Steven Schwartz. Thank you. 
Moving on with the theme of hard work, dedication, and just all-out tenacity. Next, we have a very special graduate candidate to speak with you. This would be the valedictorian of the class of 2017. The one, the only, Mr. Brandon Shepard. People have said the key to a good speech is brevity, but people have also said that socks don't go well with sandals. And after four years here, I would be foolish not to disregard both. <laughs> but this speech need be no longer than a sentence. Live your life and live it well. A wise man once told me, titrations build character. In layman's terms, a titration is a method of adding a known concentration of one substance to an unknown concentration of another substance. But that's just science mumbo jumbo. Typically, an indicator will turn the solution slightly pink when the reaction is complete. The problem is, one drop can make or break the experiment. It's like the evil Louisiana hot sauce. I did one such experiment last year at AP Chemistry. And I stayed in that class until 6 o'clock at night. Now, don't worry, it wasn't against my own will. I could have left and finished another day, but I wanted to be done with that and live my life. The wise man who told me that was Mr. Cameron. For those of you who didn't know him, he was and is one of the most prolific people alive today. What he said is true. Titrations do build character, but it doesn't end with titrations. Everything in this world affects you, but the truly difficult things form you. Moreover, you have to work hard to get where you want to be in life. Everything was meant to be a way station for something greater. So don't settle and allow your life to stagnate. Thankfully, very few things actually require talent. So never let that be an excuse. Except, perhaps, if your dream is to get a 100 on a Miss Miranda paper. In which case, I have no advice. For everything else, hard work is what separates the prolific from the pitiful. And thankfully, Hard work is freely accessible to all those who seek it. Many of you have asked what my secret is. It's just hard work. That's all. It's available to all of you. Whatever your titrations may be, let them mold your humanity. Live your life and live it well. But in antithesis to my last point, and I am allowed to contradict myself a little, there is such a thing as trying too hard. Our society encourages perfection and getting ahead, being the best, but that's not always a good thing. By all means, never diminish the importance of hard work, or else my first section of the speech was meaningless. But also don't sacrifice your integrity for overachievement. There's extreme value in relaxing and resting. Work hard for the things you want, but never, ever pursue things that other people want you to want. There is a difference. As a personal anecdote, I am a perfectionist. Surprise. <laughs> it may have been useful in some ways, but at great personal cost. The problem with trying too hard is that it's not in our DNA to achieve perfection. Reach for perfection with the hopes of achieving excellence, but understand that perfection is outside the capabilities of our species. I truly believe you will find more happiness that way. And in the same way, never be afraid of reaching for something you want to do because of fear. The only thing to fear in this world is fear itself if you're FDR. And for everyone else, it's death. And depending on your worldview or religion of choice, even death isn't something to fear. So never let someone tell you you can't do something. If there's nothing to fear, then go out and do it. Of course, SpongeBob SquarePants famously said, you don't need a license to drive a patty. <laughs> live your life and live it well. Finally, I wish to share William Ernest Henley's Invictus, a poem that puts everything so beautifully, because sometimes the works of artists in the past can put it so much better than we can. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I think whatever gods may be, 
for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. For those of us who hate poetry, it shares a simple message. Live your life and live it well. To the teachers, your work is appreciated beyond expression of words. No amount of speeches, thank yous, or gift cards could ever come close to communicating how influential and meaningful a part you've played in our lives. And though I thank all teachers, I would be amiss not to thank a special few. And graduates, you should probably do so afterwards as well. I thank Mr. Spadafino for showing me the joys of teaching. Mr. Murphy for my love of English and never accepting truths. Mrs. Miranda for, ch for challenging me and for 51% of everything. She understands that. And Mr. Kammerer for showing me how to be the best person I could possibly be. Thank you to all of you. And of course, I thank my friends and family. They've been unyielding in love, and it's now close to leaving for college that you start to realize you can't always appreciate things until they're gone. So appreciate them now. Graduates, class of 2017, stare into the eyes of challenge with a smug grin. You are limited only by the unlimited bounds of your imaginations, the insatiable depths of your souls. Live in the now, and the future and past will take care of themselves. And lastly, make yourselves proud. Do what you wish to do in life. I have been honored to be a part of your lives. And that's not just something I write in a speech to sound good, it's something I mean. You've all touched me in a unique and special way, and I will forever love being called your classmate, valedictorian, and friend. I love every one of you and will be rooting for you. I always have been. Live your life and live it well. And as the great Michael Scott once said, may your hats fly as high as your dreams. Congratulations, class of 2017. Let's go graduate. <laughs>